Okay, let's preview the upcoming Rugby World Cup. And now France, the hosts, they're in Pool A. Uh, let's break it down. There are four pools uh, or groups, five teams per pool. I do think we are going to see some upsets, and I do think some big nations will fail to get out of the group stage. We've also got a debutant in this year's World Cup as well. So let's have a look at Pool A first. That contains New Zealand, France, Italy, Uruguay, and Namibia. Uh, I think the, the game between New Zealand and France will tell us who's going to finish out on top uh, of Pool A. France are actually one of the favourites going into this World Cup as well. They did, I think, underperform slightly in 2007, but the French never count them out. New Zealand are looking a little bit vulnerable. They're not as invincible as they were in previous World Cups. Italy, we don't know fully what to expect from Italy, but they're under 20s. They've got some great young talent uh, coming through their youth system. If they can get some of those under 20 players uh, into their senior squad for this World Cup. I think they will. They could be dangerous for France and New Zealand. They could nick some losing bonus points. They could upset them. Uh, Uruguay and Namibia, that's, I think, going to be a fun head-to-head -head between those two nations to see who actually comes out on top there. Uh, Namibia are searching for their first ever win at a Rugby Union World Cup. But, Uruguay massively improved. That could be a fun game. They're not going to challenge uh, uh, to get out of the pool stage, but it, there could be some fun there as well. Uruguay massively improved from where they were, you know, uh, two decades ago. They've come on leaps and bounds. They've got some good good players themselves. That Uruguay Italy game could be quite entertaining. But I think France and New Zealand will finish first or second, depending on who wins that game. Uh, that's the ultimate. How many bonus points uh, can they get? Pool B. South Africa, Ireland, Scotland, Tonga, and Romania. Uh, Ireland, South Africa looks like uh, quite a tasty head-to-head. -head. Scotland, they've lost Stuart Hogg. He's now retired. Um, Scotland can play some attacking, exciting rugby. Defensively is their concern. Tonga could be an upset there. Uh, Romania, first time back in the World Cup in a while. They've missed out in the last uh, couple of editions. We don't know what to expect from Romania. They've got a solid forward pack, so that could be quite interesting with the, the forward battles. But I think the, the outcome of who comes out on top is Scotland, Ireland. Ireland, again, one of the favourites. Ireland and France are the two joint favourites right now, but the Southern Hemisphere nations of New Zealand and South Africa, you know, they, they prove themselves when it comes to World Cup time. South Africa, obviously, are the, the holders of the 2019 uh, tournament. They want to retain... Uh, the Web Ellis. So uh, Paul B looks pretty, pretty, pretty settled. Tonga could upset the apple cart. Scotland on their day can be brilliant, can be can be disastrous. We just don't know what to expect with Scotland. But attacking wise, they are fantastic. But losing Stuart Hogg, who's announced his retirement with immediate effect, that does weaken them a little bit uh, with, with you know what he brings from fullback. Paul C is where it starts to get interesting. Wales, Australia, Fiji, Georgia, and Portugal. Uh, no debutants in this group. Um, Wales, they're in crisis. I don't think Wales get out of the group. I think Australia, Fiji and Georgia uh, are going to give Wales problems. Uh, I think Wales are in crisis. Georgia could get out of the group. I honestly think Georgia could. This could be the World Cup where they establish themselves and get out of the group. <coughs> Wales look vulnerable. Australia aren't going at 100%. The Eddie Jones second era has just started. Um, Fiji can just produce fantastic fantastic free-flowing rugby they have been to the quarterfinals before georgia's forward pack and and, and now they're improving back line look dangerous and they've obviously recently beaten wales as well so there's blood in the water there portugal they've got a great sevens program they will be entertaining they will be entertaining they've come a long way since 2007 they will be entertaining do not count out portugal having at least one upset in this group um possibly the most interesting and open group but i think wales are vulnerable with the crisis going in with high profile players all retiring from international rugby warren gatland you know is he going to be the savior the second time round? it's been a disappointing four years for wales a lot of crisis financial issues within the game australia with eddie jones again um they're not firing on all cylinders there's issues there fiji and georgia do not discount them from throwing in some upsets there could be a lot of upsets in pool c and we could see some really entertaining results pool d england japan argentina samoa and chile i think japan and argentina could prevent england getting out of the group stage i honestly believe england much like wales in transition bit of crisis in the domestic game uh, samoa they're always fun to watch you don't know what to expect with samoa chile debutants you know just being here is an achievement they have come so far in their development as an international side this is going to be their biggest test ever 
they just want to score points. They don't want to be held to nil by any side. They're here to entertain. Um, they're not expecting to win games, but they're here to have fun and enjoy and, and keep improving. England, much like Wales, very vulnerable. Japan have now proven themselves as a Tier 1 nation. Do not discount the Japanese. They're very well organised. Their fitness levels are outstanding, and uh, they, they do play at a high pace, high intensity. So Japan, do not discount them. Argentina, um, they've had some great World Cup stories over the years, some great runs. They've got the semi-finals. They are now an established Tier 1 nation. England are vulnerable. Samoa could throw an upset in there. So Pool C and Pool D are less predictable than Pool A and Pool B. Um, the knockout stage is obviously, we've got to see what happens. I do think Wales and England are vulnerable. I think Australia are vulnerable as well. Argentina may fail to get out of the, the pool stage. Japan may fail to get out of the pool stage. Countries like Georgia and Fiji may throw some, you know, uh, spanners in the works and may actually surprise Fiji obviously have got to knock out stages before Pool A and Pool B, Pool B are more easy to predict I think Pool A, Pool B uh, New Zealand and France will make uh, the knockout stages Pool B, uh, South Africa, Ireland potentially Scotland make the knockout stages Pool C, Wales and England look vulnerable they could fail to make the knockout stages Australia could potentially fail to get out of their group. Uh, Fiji and Georgia, again, upsets abound. Argentina and Japan are going to prove really tough opposition for a, a transitioning England side. Um, Japanese, obviously, were great hosts four years ago. Argentina have got a proven track record now in World Cups. They've got that bug, and they are much, much better than what they were in 2007 when they really stunned the world with how they played. Um, they can throw the ball around if they want to. They've got a great sevens programme. Their forward pack is just machine-like. I think playing against the likes of New Zealand, South Africa and Australia have massively improved uh, the consistency of Argentina. Their quality of players is massively improved. More professional players now. Their squad depth is much deeper. They have some talent. So this could be the most open World Cup we've seen. The French and the Irish are still favourites going into this with the form they've carried in over the last couple of years. But this is going to be a fun World Cup in a couple of months' time when it kicks off at the beginning of September. Do not discount some upsets. It's going to be fun, but some big nations may fail to get out of the pool stage. Anyway, from me for now, thank you very much for watching. Let's see uh, how the World Cup kicks off. There's a lot of issues in, in, in Clubland. There's a lot of financial issues with the game at Clubland. But internationally, we're going to see the best of the best. And of course, those lesser nations like Portugal, like Chile, like Namibia, like Romania, um, like Uruguay, a lot of them have massively improved. Uruguay especially. Portugal, they've got a great sevens programme. Chile, where they've come from, uh, they beat the US, they beat the Canadians. You know, yes, they, they're yet to beat Uruguay recently. Uruguay is the best South American nation behind Argentina. There's been some massive improvement in the Tier 2 and Tier 3 nations. They're not going to be easy games. They are going to be fun to watch. There will be some upsets. There will be some great stories to come out of this tournament. Let's see how it plays out in two months' time. Thank you very much for watching. Please place your thoughts in the comments section below. I will have some more content for you very, very soon.